we were in a dead sleep and Ben's phone started ringing and it was someone driving by and said, your barn is on fire. So it is literally the middle of the night. Just went and found my glasses so now I can actually see. We got black everywhere. I am what you would call emotionally exhausted at this point. That was the craziest thing I think I've ever lived through in my life. So we're asleep. We've been asleep. I don't know, hour or two at this point. We're good and asleep. Get a phone call from some angels among us that uh, knew Ben. You have worked with him before and and I don't know why I just leapt out of bed as soon as the phone rang and he grabbed the phone and he said hello and I heard them through the phone say your barn is on fire and we went crazy grabbing clothes throwing on clothes and coats and running out the door and it just went crazy from there oh my gosh Is there, are they okay in there? Yeah. I strung a water hose. Are they okay? Yeah. I think that's behind it. Like... People just stopped off the road. Our barn is on fire. I have I have no idea what's going on. Ben and Lane and Emily have been in there. Where, where's Daddy and Lane? I am so afraid right now. We were in a dead sleep and Ben's phone started ringing and it was someone driving by and said, your barn is on fire. That is just, oh, it's just the way I never want to wake up again. Run outside, run around the backyard and the barn, it's no little fire this time. The barn is engulfed in flames all the hay that's in there is on fire the barn itself is on fire there's smoke billowing and rolling everywhere and um they started trying to put it out emily sprang in action she was awesome getting water hoses and ben and lane were right up in there trying to put it out grabbing buckets from the pond like running like crazy and the two guys that saw the fire they they came back and they helped too I honestly don't even know why I'm recording at this moment other than I don't know what else to do. There's nothing I can do to help at this moment. Ben is out there. There's men here trying to get the fire out. Ben wound up inhaling quite a bit of smoke, had a fire extinguisher and wound up using that and wound up actually inhaling some of that as well. Uh, and then he was just really sick. And um, the guys that came back to help, they, I was worried about them too. They were, especially one of them was really coughing and just sick as well. And so Ben wound up getting checked out by the EMTs and um, they mentioned going to the ER or they could monitor him for a bit. He wound up letting them monitor him for a while, getting some oxygen and things, and he's doing better. Uh, I'm still concerned. I'll be watching him real, real close tonight. You all right? No? What's wrong? You did great. mud everywhere. You alright? Not really. Emotionally exhausted? You okay? 
Praise the Lord, it's out. <laughs> they saved it. Why don't you come look at it? Huh? Why don't you come look at it and we'll go to bed? Oh, I will. I've got to go in for a minute. There's a bunch. We got like 80% of it in the pond. But while we were dragging, it was falling off the sides. There's mm -hmm. big clumps of it. Yeah. I'm sure they soaked it good. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just even out in the middle, it's hard to get to. And they're bedding in it and rooting in it. We want to make sure they don't throw some. Just cannot even say how thankful we are. This could have been so much worse. Could have very easily lost a life tonight. And so I'm just, I'm wore out in my body and soul, I guess you would say. Like, I am so tired at this point of just, that was just so intense that it just, it just sapped me. So all I can do is just say, I'm so, so thankful that the Lord protected us again tonight. Was a, definitely an emotional roller coaster. Oh, man. I never really knew a fire extinguisher wouldn't, it wouldn't even touch that hay bale. <clears throat> we was throwing buckets of water on it. <clears throat> that wasn't getting it. <laughs> Just everything we done, it was like no avail. We wasn't winning. You'd think you'd make a little bit of <clears throat> headway, and we may go back. What all fire departments came, do you know? <coughs> no, I'd I, like to just uh, say thank you that they did. I know it was Rosebud. I don't know if uh, Joy. Joy came or not. I, I really don't know. I Joy think they did. did. I saw some old and, uh, thank them for coming. Yeah. I don't know what to say right now. It's just... Like the emotional roller coaster, for sure. So thankful for the guys that saw it and called and came back and helped. That yeah, and they truly was in, angels. They was in the barn with their water hose, smoke just covering them. They was trying to cover up wet rags, cover their face up, just to be able to try to breathe in there. Oh my! <coughs> that, that definitely that smoke and that that fire extinguisher got to me. I know it did them too, so I'm hats off to them big time. Are you okay? Yeah, just, my head's pounding right now. What'd they say my blood pressure was? I don't know. I think it's 163 over 101, I think. Just from stress? I don't know. My lungs felt like I've been running in a, a marathon in uh, about three degree weather. They're just burn it. <clears throat> We're gonna go out there and check and see if see if anything's smoldering. So the structure of the barn's definitely compromised. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have to have to put a new pole in for sure. I don't know. Daylight will kind of shed light per se on what all we got coming. Ooh, what a ride. What a ride. It is the, uh, the afternoon after all this craziness. Um, really don't know where all the, to go from here, except we will, uh, we will fix everything, rebuild it back. Uh, as you can see, one of our main, one of our main support beams here that supports this tall, tall hay barn is uh, very burnt, very charred. Uh, gonna have to be torn out, replaced. Got somebody coming to look at the, uh, doing that, give me a price on it. I may end up probably having to redo this one, but praise the Lord, it's only these two and a few two by sixes. How blessed we are that somebody was driving by at the right time and actually knew me, called me, woke me up and uh, when I come out the door, he said, uh, I grabbed a fire extinguisher and he said, that ain't gonna do it. We tried it. Uh, we got the fire extinguisher out, uh, used all of it. And that's when I come in here in the barn using it and inhaled a bunch of the, uh, the smoke from it or smoke from the hay bales, the, the dust from the powder of the fire extinguisher, trying to find my way back out of here to get out so I didn't get trapped in here. Um, and then we, Emily, I'm so proud of her. She ran and grabbed a water hose, 
from quite a ways off, strung it all the way out here, and, and praise the Lord, it reached inside the barn. We, one of the guys was sitting there spraying the hay from from this side over here, coming at the hay. I'm standing right where the uh, the hay was. <clears throat> the guy that called me, me and him and Lane, ended up coming out here in the pig pen, going out to that little pig pond, scooping water by five gallon buckets, coming back in here and throwing it on the hay from that side. Um, it seemed like forever and ever till the fire trucks got here, but realistically it wasn't. They got here really quick. I am super, super thankful for that. If they wouldn't got here so quick, we would have probably lost it all because it was really, it was really getting rolling. We were all getting exhausted running back and forth from the, from the pond, carrying water in all that mud and muck. I mean, we just got a torrential downpour here um, yesterday during the day. So uh, it was super muddy out there, trying to run back and forth to grab that, just totally exhausting. Um, all the piglets did make it out, and they, they was not in here, but from the way it looks, it looks like where I put that heat mat in that box, I do not know how it happened, but the box is completely burnt down. There's a little bit of a two by four left. Um, you can see the wires from the heat mat. Those heat mats for germination, they do not get hot, so I don't know. There's two things that's crossed my mind that could have happened. The piglets could have chewed on the wires and it is, I guess, irresponsible of me. Uh, my fault totally. I should have taken that heat mat out because they don't have to have it now that the uh, super cold weather is gone. I should have got on that and got it out. Is either that or the extension cord overheated because, mm, where's it at? Because on that pole right there, is where we plugged it in and run an extension cord from there to right here um, had it hooked up here so it they couldn't have got to that um, unless water got to it and shorted it out i don't know we're just super blessed it didn't burn this whole thing down uh, you can kind of tell by the tin is discolored how charred all this stuff is and then all the hay there was actually, I think, eight bales of hay sitting in here. That's all that's left. Lane actually got on the tractor, come in from the other end, and come through the barn pushing all the hay out. And the, uh, the fireman was sitting there just dousing it and dousing it with water. When we quit last night or this morning, at whatever it was, 1.30, 2 o'clock, I can't remember, um, everything was out. There was no smoke coming from nowhere. I got up this morning after sleeping in a little while. I got up, go to work, looked out, and one of those hay bales had started smoking again. Lane come out with a water hose, doused it down real well. It's not smoking now. I've got to get it all out of there. And well, you can see Mama Pig, she's using it. I said Mama Pig, that's short tail's using it and the piglets are playing in it. But I think we're just gonna go ahead and get all this out of here. Um, I gotta get it dug out of that pond. I pushed it off in the pond just in case it did light back. Uh, we've just got a mess, but uh, thank y'all. Thank y'all, thank y'all so much for your prayers, your thoughts, uh, your kind words on Facebook. We'll come back from it. I can tell you one thing. I will not have another heater of any kind in this barn at all, period. I'm gonna build something else or move something out there. One of our great, great friends has sent us a uh, actual farrowing hutch mat that we will put in the next building that is not gonna be attached to this or our building with our meat in it. Should have learned my lesson the last time. <laughs> I definitely learned it this time. Uh, yeah, this is, Definitely been a <clears throat> emotional roller coaster. <sighs> How close we came to losing everything out here. I mean, our, our camper, our boat, our tractors, our bailers, everything's in this building. And then, like I said, it's attached to another building with all of our meat stored in it. We're just, we know how blessed we are.
Mm. Anyway, I'm going to sign off here. Thank you all for watching. Till next time. God bless y'all. Hey, y'all. So it has been a couple days now. And this video, I'm sorry, is probably all over the place. I know Ben told me he already kind of wrapped this video up. But I couldn't let you guys go without doing a little reflecting myself. Um, the other night, I don't want to over dramatize something. But I told Ben I don't want to... Uh, minimize something that was that was so huge in our life and that's what the other night was for so many reasons the two guys that stopped and got us out of bed I can't thank them enough I mean they literally they are the reason that uh, it ended as well as it did it was late they'd been working they were heading home from work and they could have drove on by they could have just been like huh that was weird and went on by and assumed we knew what was going on or uh, who knows you can justify a lot of things when you don't want to get involved but they didn't do that and so thank you to them and it makes me want to stop when i see something and just make sure even if you're like okay five people probably already called them their cows out or whatever the case may be don't do that i'm not going to do that anymore make sure make sure that if people need you to let them know something's going on that you take the time to do it next thing i've been thinking about is there is some super raw footage in this video from when i was going through this fire and um, i had stayed up at the house i don't know what all will come across as far as the storyline in this video but uh, when you see me like just i'm in the garage just i'm kind of like just I don't know what to do i'm like frozen with fear for one we've just been woken up out of a deep sleep um, to people saying the barn's on fire. We jumped out of bed, ran outside. Well, I don't even know if we've all got proper clothes on and all that. People are in t-shirts. It's freezing outside and all that stuff. And then they start screaming at me to call 911. And I get myself awake enough and together enough to do that. And while I do that, my family runs out to the barn and into the fire. And there's smoke just hay when it's burning. There's smoke billowing everywhere. At that point, all I can hear is coughing and hacking. It sounds like someone literally hacking up a lung, multiple people. And then I start hearing throwing up and just dry heaving and all that. I don't even know who it is, much less where they are. Because you can get lost in smoke so easily. You can't see through it. It's just, it was a horrible situation and it felt it felt overwhelming to me i'm not gonna lie i thought i don't know where my people are much less the two guys that stopped to help us i didn't know where they were either that was by far the most stressful moment of my entire life is not knowing where the people that make up my whole world were and if they were okay and that just as i reflected on it the last couple days i'm just so thankful I don't feel upset about it. I don't feel stressed anymore. I feel such a peace. I feel such, so blessed. Ben and I have talked about it multiple times. We are so blessed. The Lord watched over us and took care of us. He sent the guys that, that chose to stop and help us and put themselves in danger. He sent all the people that helped us out. Um, he protected Ben and the kids. There was a moment not a moment there was a little bit of time after it was over ben was not okay i put this on facebook but um he was not okay he was doubled over throwing up everything he had he about stumbled at one point i thought he was going to fall off in the pond that he was dipping water out of he just kicked it into action and just about overdid it and then he inhaled a lot of smoke and held the uh, fire extinguishers and things like that. He just, it was just a moment where I thought, I, I don't know if he's going to be okay through this. And then um, I just, all I knew to do was grab a bucket and put it there for him to sit on. And, and then the EMT showed up and to see him sitting there on that bucket wearing oxygen, at that point he was willing to do whatever they said when they were checking him out because I think it scared him too. And to, to see your big, strong husband humbled like that and not knowing you know I, I just didn't know if everyone was okay where everyone was it was just stressful 
But I say all that to say we are fine. We are so very blessed that it turned out the way it did. And I'm, I'm just thankful the Lord was watching over us. If you know me very much at all, my favorite worship song is Waymaker. Everyone knows I love that song. Um, that's in my small circle of friends and family. And um, the part it says, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. And that's just what I feel about the other night. God was working. He was working behind the scenes. When we're asleep like that at night, you think about it, you're at your most vulnerable time. You're not aware of what's going on around you. You're um, you're just vulnerable. And that was our most vulnerable time. And to be woken up like that and just, it just felt so raw and so, so like, vulnerable that's the only word i can i know i keep saying that but that's what keeps coming to mind but we had the lord watching over us even when we weren't aware that we needed to even be in action or or that anything was going on he was taking care of us through all that when we weren't even aware and so i'm just i feel like sometimes in life you get these little and not even little but you get these life changing moments that can set you on a different path and that's what i feel right now i feel like almost like my whole family's lives flashed before my eyes when i didn't know where they were and there was this smoke and this and people were sick and it was scary and it was so much bigger than me and i couldn't handle it and it was it was like i was in a nightmare or in another reality or something and it just did something to me and so I don't feel sad. I don't, I know, even though I'm crying, I feel so amazingly blessed. I feel blessed with the family I have. I feel blessed with you guys. I feel blessed with um, just this life I get to live and to share it with all of you in this YouTube community. Because we call y'all our YouTube family, but you really are like family to us. And, um, it's just, it's something I never want to take for granted again. I never want to take Ben for granted or the kids or just I don't want to have I know I will everybody does but I don't want to have even one more day where I'm grumpy or hard to get along with or anything like that because you never know when it's someone in your circle of people when it's gonna be their time to go so I just encourage y'all this video is a video of hope and I hope that's what comes across is that even in something that could be so catastrophic, we were so blessed. I'm so thankful for it. And I just don't plan to let this opportunity pass me by. I plan to um, be different and show those I love every day how much they mean to me. I think sometimes as Christian people, we forget what our mission here is. And that is to take God's love outside of the walls of the church church is great and it's great to meet together and grow and be fed but but it's about taking it out and taking it to a hungry world that needs hope and they need us to show it to them and they need us to introduce them to god's love because god has a crazy awesome love for every single person it's not just us it's not exclusive and that's what comes out of this for me is just, I just want to be the person that shows other people how much they're loved and that they're valuable and that I will stop on the side of the road for you when I see your barn on fire and wake you up and help you fight the fire. And I won't pass you by. And just, it's just, it's really rocked me to my core. And so I just want to start with you guys and tell you how thankful I am for you. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for always being with us on this journey and supporting us. We really, truly appreciate it. God bless.